2012 Buick Verano. I don't, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Verano. It's spelled V-E-R-A-N-O. <laughs> I have never worked on one of these, um, but I am familiar with this Ecotech engine. Let's go to the scan tool first. Let's see what kind of fault codes we have. The customer complaint is a check engine light. So I, I don't know of any running problems. It is a 2012. I do have the option of an automatic ID. We'll see if this works for this. It may or may not using the new Varus edge here on this, courtesy of Rosedale Technical College. This is not mine. This is the school's. So thank you for letting me borrow this, Dennis, who is my boss. Um, cool, it did auto ID it, so I'm hitting okay. And we're just gonna go to the engine management system. I'm not doing an all code scan. I'm only wor worried about the check engine light. And what we have is a P0010, which is an intake cam position actuator solenoid valve control circuit. So that's awesome. I, I know probably what's wrong with this. It's common that these solenoids will fail. I have a video where I show this. It's on a 2008 Saturn. I'll put a link in this video for that when you guys can watch the process. I'm gonna try to do this one a lot faster than I did that one. Um, I'm gonna take this cover off the top. And um, our solenoids for this are right here. All right, so the one up front, this should be, this should be my intake solenoid right here. And then this one should be the exhaust solenoid. And what I don't know about these right now is whether or not they're power or ground side switched. I can't remember from the video that I did, but I'm, I'm just going to do a couple of voltage measurements and, uh, and then see what, what I have. I'll, I'll compare the exhaust to the intake and then and we'll just go from there. I need to be careful back probing this because what I can actually do is just by back probing it, I may make the solenoid come back to life. Just by moving the connector, the male pins inside, you stress them and then you can make the solenoids make contact again. But honestly, with these codes on this system, you're pretty safe to put these solenoids in. And I'm gonna tell this garage owner to do both if we find that this intake one is bad. So a couple quick voltage measurements. I just have the key on. Just going to my home tab and I'm go, going to go right to my scope multimeter and the test that I wanna do. Really guys, um, you can just use a voltmeter for this. Okay, I know I have an expensive scan tool here, but just a voltmeter is fine. In fact, I'll go in the volts DC mode on my digital multimeter just because I wanna show that it's really all you need to troubleshoot this circuit. So uh, I'll focus you a little closer and we'll go with the exhaust cam first. And the reason I wanna go with the exhaust one first, uh, the exhaust cam actuator solenoid, is um, this is our known good one. Okay, and I have no voltage on that wire. And... I have no voltage on that wire. So my memory is now coming back to me on this and that these are power side switched circuits. This is section three material for you guys that are following along in my classroom material and in my book, section three, power and ground side switching. This is a power side switch circuit. And then what I can figure out is which one has the constant ground, which one is the computer, multiple different ways. Um, what we can do with this one is we can actually take the scan tool and uh, command it on. So I'm gonna do that on the exhaust side first. Go to functional tests, go to output controls, and then what I want is my, I want my actuator solenoid for this. Air solenoid, cooling fans, EC ignition relay. Are you gonna let me do it? Fuel pressure, trim. No, I do not see those in here. Let's go back. 
cam actuator test. I missed that. Uh, actuator, I need the solenoids themselves. Let's do the exhaust one first. And we hit continue. And so what we wanna see when we do this is when I turn this on, okay, I can hear the solenoid clicking. That's the exhaust side. Now let's go, ah, oh, I remember this now. Device exceeded limit. That means it's not gonna let me do it for very long. Um, this is where having a regular multimeter helps. Ah, shoot, how can I show you these both together quickly? Um, okay, I need to go to my graph. I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I'm gonna go to my graphing meter because this will give me a longer time base and we'll set this up to the maximum. Let's go, let's go. Well, we don't have to go maximum, I'll go a minute. A minute time base. I'll leave that live. It should still work this way. I'm gonna try it. Go to my home tab, go back to my scanner, do my exhaust one. I might, it might make me cycle the key before it lets me do it again. We'll see. Yeah, I need to turn the key off. Wait five seconds, turn the key back on. Ridiculous. I remember now whining about this last time I did this procedure on that Saturn and how it kept kicking me out of the test. So we've got a real small window here. So I'm not sure if I'm on the ground wire or the control wire yet. We're about to find out. There, it just clicked. Just turn it on and off once. Go to my scope. There we go. See the activity there? That shows me good control. It's power side switch. Looks like it's pulse width modulated too. All right. So that's the, uh, which wire is that? That's the one to the right. I'm gonna guess that that is the one to the right for the intake. This is the bad side now, guys. And I'm reading 0 0.02 on that wire. I'm now using a graph, so it's a little different. 0 0.02 on that one. Let's go back to the right. And let's energize the intake one now. Ah, so stupid. I gotta cycle the key again. Key off, wait five seconds. Turn key back on. They gotta rewrite this program for these, seriously. Give me a little bit longer testing window, it's ridiculous. Okay, so do I have my scope running right now? I do, 0 0.02, take a look at this live number in the middle, 0 0.02, and the graph shows me uh, that same value. Go to Home tab, go to the Scan tool, and continue, I'm doing the intake side now. And I'm going to turn it on. I heard it click, turn it off, and then hit exit so it doesn't mess me up with that timer. Home, scope, there is my control. Uh, looks like the highs and lows of that were more. Uh, if you look at this picture, you guys see, I can't zoom in like I can with my, with my Pico. Um, this was my exhaust one over here. Now that looks good. And then my intake one, let's zoom back out. That's the, that's the exhaust side. Here's the intake side. Those look good. So the, just the fact of me back probing this probably brought this back to life is my guess. I really wish it let me do this for a longer period of time. You see the spikes in here too suggest um, a magnetic field collapse. You see the negative spike right there. I don't know if that's going to record my mouse doing that. Um, I am... 
looking at the downward spike below the zero line at the end of this on off period that spike's telling me current flow so honestly that's telling me my ground is good too because if i didn't have ground i wouldn't have that spike let's see if we see the same thing on the exhaust one here's the exhaust yeah uh so how do you make a call on a functional solenoid how do you make a call on a functional circuit i'll tell you what with this design um i have no problem with this code uh, putting a solenoid in this it's just simply simply dead if this would allow me to and i can't do it if this would allow me to i would exercise this intake cam more and get it to where i'm controlling it and it's not clicking now i could do that manually i may do it um let's see if i push on this if i can make it not click Yeah, that's all it gave me. Okay, so we have an intermittent fault. Oh, by the way, the clicking tells you your ground is good as well. This control circuit code that's here. Sorry, I'm trying to talk about two things at once. With a control circuit fault, what that's telling you is you have a wiring problem, an open circuit or you have an open in the solenoid itself. Control circuit. This is getting a solenoid, guys. Uh, I have no problem doing that, given the fact that I've done these before, given the fact that they stock these, and um, it's just getting a solenoid. We could do resistance measurements, compare the uh, the two and maybe that would make some of you feel a little bit better that would be the last thing we do here before we put solenoids in this the only other way to be a hundred percent is I need that solenoid to malfunction again and right now it just simply is not so last check before I tell this garage owner to put the solenoids in is we'll, we'll do a quick resistance measurement for you guys that's just more to keep everybody happy keep everybody from from yelling at me and saying that I should have checked this further, but sometimes you can't always uh, create what you want. But this is reality. This is the way it goes in the field, man. You have a vehicle with a fault code, and and uh, and you can't always duplicate them. We'll go to my digital meter. We'll go to ohms. We'll calibrate these. We just put the leads together. So we get some accurate measurements. Oops, gotta move my leads up top for the ohm meter. Hard to do, those pins are really close together. This is why resistance measurements suck. Okay, I'm, I'm reading 58 mega ohms on this. I, I know at one point I read 15 ohms. I'm gonna go to the exhaust side. Um, just kind of stressing these, these pins. Is, is revealing our issues. Come on, man. That shouldn't stay on the mega ohm scale. That should drop down. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of the ohm meter here. At all. It 
So we have about 10 and a half ohms on the exhaust side. There you go, 214,000 on the intake side. And if I move the pins, is that 0.17 of an ohm? I need to make sure my leads aren't touching each other. I think they were. This is horrible. So what, what's going on here, guys, is, is as I'm putting my meter on this, I'm stressing the pins and I'm actually revealing the issue, which is the internal parts of that solenoid are bad. We are changing both solenoids on this. Um, I showed you guys what a known good one looks like on the exhaust side. Uh, the intake side one is bad and uh, we're changing them both just because this is such a common problem. So. That's it, pretty basic procedures. You really don't need the bi-directional tests to, um, to check these solenoids. You can actually do resistance measurements and you can actually check these um, with the car being driven or snap throttle test to see, for, check for control. There is ways to do that. Of course, having a bi-directional scan tool is key uh, in accuracy, but um, it can be done without it. Faulty intake cam actuator solenoid.